Hello, <clears throat> hello. Good morning, everyone. I uh, hope everybody are safe and healthy. I am Raj Sundaram, CEO of Cricket Social. Uh, Cricket Social is a social media platform with anchoring tools for cricket. I'm very happy to welcome you all for uh, you know the Cricket Social chat series episode two on pathway to US national team. We are very privileged to have Mr. Uh, Sushil Natkarni, board director, USA Cricket, with us today. Sushil Kumar, Sushil Natkarni is an Indian American cricketer, a left-handed batsman and off-spinner. He has played for the US national team since 2006 and previously played for India under 19, first class cricket and list A cricket for Maharashtra. Born in India in 1976, Sushil was considered to be one of the India's most promising young players in the mid nineties. After gaining good uh, results in engineering exams, he immigrated to US, eventually settling in uh, Texas. He first came into attention in year 2005 uh, in the interstate competition where he scored 171 and 214 in uh, you know, consecutive, I mean, consecutive matches. He first played for US in 2006 and as you know, he made his debut in a 2020 game in 2010 in the ICC World uh, you know, Qualifier. In 2012, he was declared the captain of the USA cricket team, represented USA in the ICC 2020 Qualifier. Sushil, uh, also called as Captain America, um, is very strict on the field, but very jovial off the field. He is well known for his uh, extraordinary sense of humor and love for uh, you know, uh, spicy Indian food. Currently, Sushil is actively coaching young kids uh, through his Master Strokes Cricket Academy. So now I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Sushil to join us for this webinar. Hello, Sushil. Yeah, hello there. Hi, hi, Raj. Good, how are you? Doing well, thanks. Thanks for having me and thanks for everybody that's joined. Hope uh, everybody is being safe Excellent. So Sushil, uh, just for convenience, we are actually, you know, I'm going to just categorize this, uh, our conversation today into two major, uh, you know, let's call it as segments. The first one is about uh, your journey as a cricketer, player in US, and we want to understand more about and learn from your experience. What are all the challenges you went through as a player coming into US? That's one area. The second uh, topic is basically as a cricket mentor and administrator uh, for US cricket, uh, what is the focus for us you know in the i mean in the future what is your focus uh, for the you know development of the sport and uh, to the participants if you have any questions feel free to start uh, you know uh, keying in those questions so that we can we can get those answers if it's very specific you know we can get those answers from uh, sushil so uh, sushil uh, can you actually to start off right can you walk us through your journey um, you know, into the USA cricket team. Sure. Um, yeah. And I think uh, the journey actually uh, is a very interesting one. Um, I think I would like to start from my cricket back in India. So uh, just like any other, um, you know, youngster, I was very passionate about the game back in India. Uh, wanted to represent India at the highest level. That was a dream that I had. Um, played a lot of my cricket for the state of Maharashtra. Um, represented the state at all the age levels, you know, under 16s, under 19s, um, West Zone, uh, zonal tournaments, etc. And then uh, in my under 19s, I I um, I had one final year where it was announced that the team. Uh, there is an Indian under-19 team that's going to be uh, going to Australia. And um, uh, I think since I heard that news, uh, I became a fanatic that uh, I have to be on that plane uh, to Australia. This is my last chance. And uh, I worked really hard that year, um, scored over a thousand year runs in uh, the under-19 season, um, got noticed by the selectors and uh, was picked as the opening batsman for uh, the Indian under-19 team on the tour to Australia. So I, this happened around 95, 96, 45-day um, tour to Australia. 
where I had the pleasure of uh, facing up to Mr. Brett Lee, um, you know, all through the tour. And that was uh, quite an experience because a uh, lot of times back playing back in India, I'd heard, you know, my, uh, fast bowlers come and say, uh, I'm a fast bowler. And, uh, and after I came back from this tour, <laughs> I, I uh, had to let people know, I think I've really faced fast bowling, what it really means. <laughs> So right. you know, that was quite an uh, interesting uh, tour. It, uh, it grew me professionally quite a bit. Uh, it made me realize how, uh, uh, you know, how, how to play tough cricket, hard cricket, um, and, and uh, you know, um, make friends along the way. Uh, so, so that happened around 95, 96. Uh, got an opportunity to represent uh, my state in the Ranji Trophy the following year. Um, had a w, debut 55 odd uh, in my first uh, uh, one day game for the state uh, against uh, Mumbai that was uh, being led at the time by the great Sachin Tendulkar. So mm -hmm. that was quite an honor for me to kind of just, that was my debut game and uh, was able to do well um, in that game. Um, a year later, actually, that was around the time my engineering days, uh, engineering was also going on. So um, I do want to share those experiences uh, with, uh, you know, potential kids on the call or anybody hearing where um, it was a challenging time in terms of keeping up with the engineering schedule and, uh, and playing cricket. Uh, never easy. But um, because of the passion, you know, uh, you got to, I tried to make it work and uh, just was ready to put in the extra hours needed to make it happen. So, um, you know, my schedules would start from 6 a.m. and go all the way till one, uh, one in the morning. Uh, that included a lot of cricket and a lot of assignments and whatever came my way. But uh, it was uh, it was pretty interesting times for me, and um, I was able to uh, get it done. Um, I, I think in '99 odd, I moved to US, and while when moving, I had no idea that there was cricket in the US. So I actually gave away all my equipment to my friends and anybody that asked for it. So I had a sponsorships at the time back in India from cricket manufacturers. And uh, I did, since I was not going to be using anything, I pretty much gave away everything and boarded the plane to, to pursue my master's um, uh, in the US. So fast forwarding, um, maybe, you know, another four or five years. By then I had learned that there is cricket in the US and US does have some sort of a national team and, and people in the US kind of uh, had gotten to know that somebody like me was in the US uh, and I had some good experience uh, with the game. And so I got, started getting calls to come and uh, fly down and play for some clubs, uh, you know, in different parts of the country. And, um, and uh, my, my passion, I think, was reignited at that time. And I said, hey, this is another opportunity to, uh, to come back and, uh, you know, play, not only play cricket, but uh, play some uh, competitive cricket. So I started pursuing that um, and uh, eventually started doing well in different parts uh, of the country. And I was, I was based in Houston since 2003. So I was playing a lot of cricket locally and, uh, you know, did well. And then slowly through that, uh, that process started uh, elevating because uh, was doing well against, uh, you know, um, locally and scoring a lot of runs and uh, got an opportunity to compete at the Western Conference uh, level in the national tournaments uh, uh, that were being held at the time. Um, and so slowly my profile started growing and uh, then you reference this tournament where, uh, you know, I scored back-to-back uh, -back, uh, uh, hundreds of 170 followed by 210 or something. And I think that caught a lot of people's attention. And uh, uh, I believe there was an article written um, uh, as well uh, about, uh, you know, 
uh, the selectors having a better look at me as a player and uh, whether I could uh, be included in the US team. So um, long story short, at some point uh, in 2006, I, I did get my uh, break into the US team um, and uh, scored a century on debut for USA uh, at the time and uh, went on to score a few more hundreds in the following tournament. So um, I think I established myself pretty quickly in the US team. And uh, as things move forward, uh, you know, I was uh, vice captain of the team for many years uh, until in 2012, I got an opportunity to lead the team to the World Cup qualifiers. Uh, but the journey has been pretty interesting. You know, it wasn't easy to represent USA when you have a full-time job and, right. um, yeah. and uh, you're trying to manage many different things and to keep performing at a high level. But I think my background in the 90s, like I explained, you know, getting through engineering and playing Ranji Trophy at the same time, it was um, all those experiences of managing things, uh, you know, being able to multitask at times or, or uh, going over and beyond what you uh, are required to do to actually pursue a passion. All of those things kind of helped me at the time. And... Um, and I was able to, uh, I think, uh, looking back, I had a pretty successful career for USA for over a decade uh, when I retired in 2014. And, uh, and since then, I've, uh, I've always tried to keep connected with the game. And uh, one of the questions on my day of my retirement was, you know, how can, how can I help the next generation of cricketers uh, here in the US? Because... Uh, you know, at the moment, those best resources that I had available to me may not be necessarily available to the kids here. So that's where I launched the academy with my very good friend, Usman Shuja, who uh, happens to be the, uh, at the time, happened to be the top uh, uh, wicket taker for USA ever. And uh, so we both uh, launched our academy and then uh, we are... Uh, you know, spending time with kids. And at the moment, I happen to be spending uh, time with kids all across the US and mentoring a lot of uh, youth in the country. Excellent. So one question that it actually comes up to me. So you mentioned, you know, you were really working hard during your uh, Ranji under 19. When you played for India under 19, you said that in one particular year, you really worked hard. So I always get this question, right? I mean, I've been playing a lot of, you know, club level cricket from my school days even in US, my question is, okay, what do you, what do we really mean by hard work? Is it uh, playing uh, five hours of batting continuously in nets or bowling five hours or bowling at uh, one particular spot or practicing one stroke or practicing feeling? What exactly is it? Because that's always been a question to me. Um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of these, you know, kids, upcoming players, promising cricketers might probably have this question too. Yeah, very good question. Um, so I think what my, my routines, um, at the time, you know, on that particular year, uh, the things I changed were, uh, working with my coach, uh, Mr. Milan Gunjal at the time, he, uh, he really helped me, um, you know, from my mental makeup, number one, uh, we had special drills we used to do to get me mentally focused on scoring, uh, runs. You know, in particular, like, for instance, there was this one drill I used to do where uh, I would arrive 30 minutes before everybody else and uh, go around the cricket field for five rounds. And uh, each, each, uh, it wasn't a, a drill to actually run, run the circuit. It's more like focusing on um, my innings uh, as I'm running and, uh, you know, just saying, okay, each, each round around the ground is worth 20 runs. Uh, so five constitutes a hundred. And uh, as you run, you're like literally not focused on the running, but focused on, on just visualizing my innings um, as it's progressing and, uh, you know, starting to feel like the, the fatigue coming in, uh, the heart rate's racing, the mind's racing, but you're still keeping focused on the task and uh, just going through the the feelings of how it feels to be in your 60s and your 80s 
and the last round is worth, uh, you know, you're in your 90s and, uh, you know, you got to keep the momentum and the focus and, and get to the 100. So that was one drill I used to do very religiously that helped me a lot. Uh, when I went into bat, I used to bat for about hour, hour and a half in the nets um, around that time. And, uh, you know, I had uh, my coach's instructions on, on what shots to focus on and what shots to avoid because these used to be three-day games at that time, the Kuch Bihar Trophy. So mm -hmm. you're looking to bat long and uh, score runs. So, so I focused on particular uh, uh, shots more than uh, others. And uh, after the batting, I used to have my own drills with a tennis ball, I remember. Again, given by the coach where I would be required to go out and have a bat by myself and uh, focus on driving the ball along the ground and things like that. So that was just one aspect of working harder. Um, mm -hmm. The other aspects were around fitness and fielding. Uh, you know, I, I, I never bow I bowled for the state at that time, but uh, spent a lot of time on fitness and fielding also. And um, more than anything, you know, just uh, an increased level of... Uh, of focus and uh, passion to get on that plane, honestly. And that, that keep, keep kept on driving me. So, you know, we played our first game at, I remember against Mumbai. And, um, you know, it was, uh, uh, it was a pretty competitive game uh, played at the Pune club in, uh, in Pune. And uh, I scored, a, I think a gritty 88 in that game. Um, and it was, uh, we couldn't win the game, I think, but we drew the game. Uh, then followed up with a 140 against Baroda. And then uh, I think um, another 140 odd again or 30 odd against Saurashtra. So, you know, the, the hard work was going on in the background. And, and when the time came, it was the actual focus on making sure that this is my last chance in this uh, to get on the plane, you know, to Australia. And uh, I don't want to give it away when I'm batting. So just kept on batting and batting and scoring runs. So, so I mean, uh, so running, you know, the full round of uh, the entire ground corresponds to 20 runs in the game. So as you keep increasing the rounds, so you will be, you know, basically nearing the century. So basically that helped you focus on, uh, on the, you know, uh, during the match. Yeah. So it's a little bit of visualization and, um, it is uh, kind of getting you used to the innings, right? So what happens is a lot of times uh, uh, a player may be able to get themselves in, but they, they'll probably bat an hour, hour and a half, and then they'll lose concentration. It's a very commonly called term, right? The player mm -hmm. lost right. concentration and made a mistake. And so right. the question is, how do you not lose concentration or how do you keep that focus on... Um, uh, you know, on continuing to bat and bat and bat. And uh, that is something that uh, that comes with such, uh, this is just one aspect of how you might do it. There are many other things you can do. But uh, this this helps you focus and, and visualize, uh, you know, how that innings is going to go. Because uh, when you're playing like three-day games and, uh, you know, playing back in India, so suppose I'm going into bat in the early in the morning, the mindset is not to say, okay, how, how am I going to be doing an hour from now or two hours from now? Uh, the mindset is, okay, uh, I'm going into bat at 9.30 in the morning. Uh, what's my score going to be at 4.30 in the evening? Uh, you know, when I'm unbeaten there. And so it's a different type of thinking, right? And, uh, right. and you, you can't just bat through the day without having prepared for something like that. And so this is just a way of, uh, of channeling your, your mind and, and uh, working through the focus. Right. So coming back to this topic, right, regarding uh, the professional commitments, I mean, uh, with all the cricket is still not a mainstream uh, sport in the US, right? In India, in, during colleges or schools, I mean, people kind of, you know, get prepared for getting into some professional cricket. So there are a lot of support system there, right? There are a lot of... Uh, uh, companies that, uh, you know, provide job opportunities for cricketers. Um, so they'll be able to, you know, dedicate more time. 
But whereas in US, that is not the case. It's not, uh, you know, a mainstream sport. So how do we, how, how do you think people will be able to manage this? Uh, I think there is a difference between playing cricket and cricket playing nations versus, you know, something that is getting up to speed. Right. Um, I, I honestly look at it from a different viewpoint. Um, I look at this as an opportunity, a fantastic opportunity, honestly. And uh, the reason I look at this as an opportunity is because um, if you are part of a mainstream sport, uh, already part of a mainstream sport, you know, you can also expect that there's going to be immense amount of competition that you're going to have to work against. Um, to give you an example, when, uh, when I played, uh, was uh, fortunate enough to play uh, for the Indian under 19 team, at that moment, I, I don't know the exact count. I may have been competing against 10,000 kids because right. it's such a mainstream sport and to get into the top uh, 15 in the country, you know, what are the odds that that's going to happen? Uh, no matter how good you are, you need a lot of uh, luck, a uh, lot of hard work and things to go your way, right? Uh, all the way through to being uh, on that uh, roster or for the team. So take, now turn that around and say, okay, you're here in the US. It's, um, it's not a mainstream sport yet, but uh, the pool that you have to compete with, it's not as big either. And, uh, you know, now we do have national teams and uh, we do have uh, uh, opportunities to uh, represent the team. So that's one aspect of it that, you know, you're what the talent pool that you're competing against uh, may not be as big. So therefore, if you are good and you're working hard, then you have a better chance of getting there, number one. Number two, uh, just from a US standpoint, you know, we honestly, we are at a tipping point in US cricket where, uh, you know, you can literally now just start seeing, uh, seeing the, the reasons why uh, you should be connected to the sport right now if you are somebody who's aspiring to do well because um, we are just around the corner for the minor league uh, T20 professional cricket to, uh, to commence. Uh, you know, we are just around the corner for pathway systems to be built up for youth and men's and women's cricket. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, we have an opportunity in a year, year, year and a half uh, to send our under-19s to the World Cup again. Uh, our ODI team is, uh, I don't know what the current ranking is. Last I heard, we were ranked number 15 in the world. Uh, so they they are going to aspire to go to the World Cup as well. So there are, and the big cheese, uh, you know, the big cheese for all of us is uh, uh, hopefully getting Major League, uh, uh, you know, uh, implemented in US by 2022-23 and that is our version of the IPL. Now you look at all this and I say hey this is a great opportunity for somebody over here based in the US right now because uh, you have all this uh, staring at you and the competition pool is nothing similar to what you might have in a country like India or Pakistan or Australia or whatever wherever the it's a mainstream sport. Right. See, one other question that comes to my mind is, back in those days, right, when you were playing in mid-2000, maybe representing US in 2006, um, how did you handle hibernation for about six months? Because I know you are settled in Texas, maybe the story is different there, but in other parts of the country where you're pretty much, you know, unlike now, you know, the current situation, there are a lot of indoor facilities that has come up. But back in those days, there were no indoor facilities. You pretty much, you know, cannot even touch your bat for six months in places like, you know, Midwest or um, even, uh, you know, um, Eastern uh, region, right? So how, how did you handle those, uh, you know, uh, challenges? How did you stay in shape? So you, you, you're touching upon a very interesting subject there. And I'll give you a... Uh, inside story about the U.S. team having played over a decade on the U.S. team. Whenever uh, 
ICC announced tournaments for the US team, uh, you know, the first thing I used to go and look at is what month is that tournament? Mm. Because if the tournament was going to be anywhere in the first three months of the year, which was Jan, Feb or March, I already knew what the result of that tournament is going to be for the US team. Oh. The reason is <laughs> the reason is most of our boys are not playing much cricket. <laughs> oh, that's a big challenge, yeah. Yeah, being in the Northeast. So I knew guys were going to come into that uh, tournament a little rusty and, uh, you know, lacking fitness and things like that. And sure enough, we always struggled in those tournaments. Uh, now, take that same tournaments that were announced maybe in the summer or the fall months. And US team, team always did well in those tournaments because boys were already, you know, uh, playing uh, lots of league cricket or, or playing uh, competitive cricket and people were, bat batters were in form and, you know, bowlers were fit and bowling quick or, uh, you know, uh, bowling good spin or whatever. So, so that's the uh, inside story about the US team and related to your question about hibernation. So um, I think you bring up a good point. Um, you know, I personally did not face that being based in Texas. Um, uh, we, we don't have to deal with those uh, harsh winter months. So we do have to deal with uh, things like rain and hurricanes and all over here. But, you know, you can still get by that and uh, you can still have cricket going on. So uh, we weren't that affect that much affected, but uh, to your point, I do have some viewpoints on the hibernation question. Uh, number one, I think uh, it it really comes down to what you want to get out of um, those uh, those periods. Uh, you know, one can decide to say, okay, I don't have much going on. It's uh, very cold, and uh, there are no facilities available, so I'm just uh, you know not going to do anything. And uh, when the time comes, I'll get myself back into shape and, uh, and off we go playing cricket. Right. That's one approach. Um, the other approach is, uh, you know, I can spend all this time uh, uh, getting myself fit. Uh, you know, you, you can still uh, focus. Uh, it's, it's kind of off season training. You can still be focusing on, on key aspects of your fitness or, uh, or your skills or uh, whatever you want to be working on uh, based on, you know, many things based on what you know about your game, what your coaches have told you or whatever feedback you've been getting. That's another aspect. The third aspect is the one where I, I would highly recommend serious players taking on is uh, not only should you be working on, on these aspects, but take yourself out of those situations and be willing to travel and go, go to different places to compete. So, you know, to your point, if you are in a hibernation area, uh, uh, then, then get on a plane or whatever and, and go play cricket, competitive cricket in other parts of the country, uh, if you can. And, uh, and, you know, keep, keep that competition levels going. So one of the things I used to do, honestly, uh, when I was trying to break into the U.S. team in uh, 2005, 2006, uh, I used to travel extensively all across the country. I mean, I, I just made it my mission to go experience competitive cricket all across the U.S. So I played in many different leagues. Uh, you know, I played in very testing conditions. Um, I was in Washington, D.C., which has some serious cricket over there and faced up to, you know, West Indian quicks on uh, not very good wickets, uh, experienced all of that and just challenged myself, uh, you know, as much as I could uh, to go and put myself in those situations, which I would not get back in Houston, basically, uh, so to speak. And, um, and you can do that. You know, you can get out of your comfort zone and uh, and. Uh, get into other areas where they are offering competitive cricket. And these days you don't have to limit yourself to the U S either. I mean, if you have the means, then you can go abroad and uh, experience cricket. It could be in India. It could be in the UK. It could even be in Canada or, uh, 
the West Indies, the Caribbean, wherever. So I think if you are uh, open to such things, then you ask the question of yourself and the answers may present themselves to you. So um, I don't know if all that makes made sense, but that's my viewpoint. No, it's all, I mean, very, really great insights because it, it is really going to help, uh, you know, uh, the aspiring cricketers to know how you handled it. I mean, I'm sure most of them are going to, you know, face some of these challenges uh, during their, uh, you know, uh, tenure. So obviously, they, it, is, it is very helpful. And I, I have one more, uh, you know, on the same line. So let's say that if, uh, you know, uh, what are all the tournaments, uh, you know, the aspiring cricketers, should consider playing in order, you know, for them to be um, considered, uh, you know, to the national side or be available for the selection. What are all the tournaments throughout US currently in in current situation? Um, at the moment, I think all that work um, is in uh, is in development mode right now. There is uh, extensive work being done um, by US cricket right now to to uh, uh, come up with the uh, playing schedule um, mm. for, uh, for cricketers in the US, uh, right from youth to adults and both men and women. Uh, but in general, you know, just from a higher level, um, one, of the, one of the things that is right about to happen is the minor league uh, T20 tournament. And uh, as folks may know, or uh, if you've been keeping up, you know, you, you're going to have 24 teams across the country uh, that could, that would be, uh, to my understanding, franchise based or ownership based. And uh, <clears throat> you have an opportunity to represent one of these teams. Um, you know, the, um, the composition will involve uh, uh, three under 21 cricketers. Um, uh, that have to be part of the squads, so that's a that's a good incentive for the youngsters uh, to try out, and uh, so that's one uh, uh, one opportunity. There is talk of uh, of of uh, you know making that as a official pathway uh, to the US team as well, pathway tournament. Oh, so, that's really uh, amazing. I mean, so there has to be three under twenty one players in every team. That's like an in the roster. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. And any, uh, when is it going to be? Is it going to be in this year or is it next year? I'm, I mean, I'm sorry, not this year, maybe next year or is it in 2022? No, the minor league tournament is, uh, uh, the official schedule has it starting on August 22nd. Uh, now, um, that is next month. And uh, this, this may move around a little bit. Uh, and obviously, as you know, we are all, uh, uh, impacted by COVID. Right. So, uh, you know, Major League Cricket is the official entity that is uh, running this tournament. So they will uh, probably provide more official announcements uh, end of this month, which is uh, right now, or about how this tournament uh, can be run across different uh, parts of the country. So there are four, uh, four conferences that have been um, organized and uh, you know uh, you have the eastern conference the southern conference central conference and the western conference right and, uh, and these uh, these uh, basically you know uh, incorporate different states and at the moment uh, unfortunately what's happening is covid is uh, uh, having different impacts in different regions slash states so some states are doing much better and have started cricket other states uh, where I'm based in Texas, we are actually going backwards right now. Right. Uh, as and California is um, also facing challenges. So, um, you know, it's very difficult for the organizers, I'm sure, uh, to come up with a unified uh, tournament structure. So we'll, I'm waiting to hear more from Major League Cricket on uh, on how they will uh, plan this. But uh, if you go to their website. Uh, Definitely August 22nd start uh, tournament is scheduled to go for five to seven weeks. Oh, that's uh, exciting. Um, this is going to be a great and, opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's one where you are asked about the possibilities for tournaments. The other one um, 
I would say are uh, the youth national tournaments and the men's national tournaments that are being planned as well. Um, and uh, per my understanding, you know, uh, we're looking at the under 14 and under 17 age categories at the moment. Uh, so these are, uh, these were originally scheduled to happen over the summer, mm -hmm. but uh, at the moment, um, I, I think uh, just given where the situation is, uh, you know, Thanksgiving might be an opportunity uh, to, to do something if, if possible. Again, a mm -hmm. uh, lot of things are unknown right now. See, for the minor league teams, right, for somebody to represent uh, or, uh, you know, get selected to play for a minor league team, is there a specific process or they should contact the owners or, or do you think there is going to be some kind of a selection trials? Um, again, um, I want to put a little bit of a disclaimer on everything I'm saying is that this okay. is my understanding of, uh, of uh, how things are. Um, there will be more of official communication from Major League Cricket on all this. So these are my viewpoints. Um, so there is uh, the, there are two or three things there from a selection uh, perspective. Uh, there will be a draft process. So in areas where uh, you know you have multiple teams and uh, and a pool of players, there will be a draft uh, that would be held um, an official draft where uh, owners will go out and, uh, you know, actually uh, select their players. Uh, so that's one process. Um, the other is uh, there will be announcements of selectors uh, for the minor league teams. And there is uh, there are specific criteria that are in place. I believe there will be three selectors per team. Um, and there is a criteria on how those, how those selectors are going to be nominated slash selected. Um, but to me, uh, I think uh, definitely there will be a little more behind the scenes in terms of uh, owners uh, wanting to get to understand the, uh, the players, right, uh, and, uh, and their capabilities. So uh, I'm, I'm actually based in, uh, in Houston, and, uh, uh, and I am associated uh, with the Houston minor league team. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, over the last uh, week and a half, we have conducted uh, some uh, trials here, uh, both, and we invited the youth as well for that, just to get them uh, um, an experience of what it feels to be part of a, uh, you know, uh, a selection trial for, uh, uh, for a serious tournament. And so we collected data on over 80 players, and uh, that is now going to help us uh, from our planning perspectives for our minor league teams to identify the players uh, as we move forward or uh, the players that uh, we would be interested in. Right. That is really exciting. I mean, this is going to be an amazing opportunity for, uh, you know, the uh, aspiring cricketers or cricket in US. This is very exciting to me. I mean, I wish uh, something like that was there, uh, you know, when we were uh, playing in mid-2000 or 90, end, you know, end of 90s. Right. So, so, I mean, considering, you know, the major league and minor leagues that you just mentioned, I mean, is, as a strategic direction, right, U.S., is it going to focus more on 50-over cricket or is it uh, 20-over, I mean, 2020? Where do you see that, uh, you know, this is going? Yeah, that's a great question um, and one that is uh, being discussed uh, quite a bit uh, at the USA cricket board level as well. Uh, so, you know, just high level, the way I look at things is uh, red ball cricket versus white ball cricket um, for the purists of the game. Um, and I don't see USA playing red ball cricket uh, slash test cricket, you know, uh, anytime soon. So uh, that is something I, I don't think we are there or we are going to get there anytime soon. And, uh, uh, and we know, all know the debate going around on about uh, test cricket right now. Um, I, I, for one, love test cricket, but, uh, you know, from a commercial perspective, right. uh, there are questions being asked. So coming over to white ball cricket. So in white ball cricket, you know, the, you look at the 50 over game and uh, you look at the T20. And I think if you look at just a, a lens of US cricket, 
um, I think the the answer is the T20 cricket because it's just the way we are living our lives here in the US. You know, uh, very few people have uh, enough time to spend an entire day uh, to to spend around the game. And uh, it's not consistent with the overall US culture itself. You know, the best, the best sports out there uh, are, I mean, if you look at baseball or, uh, or American football or whatever, it's still uh, in, in packages of three to four hours, right? Correct. And, uh, and all the commercialism happens around that. And that's the attention span of people here in the US. So for, uh, for us to get into the commercial side of things and uh, bring in more money, sponsorships, et cetera, there is, it's pretty clear to me at least that, you know, and, and a lot of people that T20 is the way to go. And, uh, you know, with minor leagues and major leagues, we'll have more professional cricketers coming in, more big names wanting to play for USA, uh, you know, and uh, and in the future, if, if things go well, if major league cricket is a success, then let's say tomorrow, you know, uh, big, uh, big uh, uh, countries like BCCI and others, they support it, then, hey, tomorrow you might have... Uh, somebody like Virat coming to play, uh, you know, in, in the US. Uh, right, and, right. And, and that's going to take it all the way to the next level, you know. So to me, that's where uh, where the, the future is, the commercial aspects are. But uh, we cannot completely ignore the fact that in world cricket, you know, USA is currently known uh, for our 50 over status because we are an ODI team right. and you can't just walk away from that either. So, so you have to kind of balance the two. Um, you know, there is uh, 50 overs. I mean, learning how to play T20, you, uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, people may have different viewpoints on this, but I don't know that I would start a kid out and, and, and teach him to be a T20 player. You know, the, even if you're playing T20, the basic fundamentals of hitting a cricket ball always come into play. And uh, you can, you, can uh, you know, improvise and you can come up with all the, all the fancy shots and all that. Uh, and uh, and I, I encourage all players to express themselves. Uh, so I never hold back players that want to try different things. But uh, the basic fundamentals of defending a cricket ball or or uh, hitting a cover drive or, uh, you know, pulling a ball or square cutting a ball. Those things are not going mm -hmm. to change. And, uh, you know, that, that opportunity uh, probably will, will be provided by a little bit of a longer version of the game where, uh, where kids growing up, you know, they can uh, go out there and, and play for longer periods and kind of learn the game a little better. To be honest with you, um, I would, I have, my viewpoint on this is that we should just from a cricket development perspective, we should not even shy away from, let's say, two day or three day games in the US because, uh, you know, my my best memories of, uh, of learning the game as a cricketer are those three day games that I used to play. Spending That's nice. Uh, um, Sushil, uh, I, it comes up actually, you know, it actually brings up another um, um, topic, right? It's about the infrastructure. Because mm -hmm. six months, most of the, you know, parts of USA are kind of, you know, in hibernation mode. Nobody does anything you know, related to, you know, outdoor sports. Unless it is related to doing something like skiing or anything like that. Are you planning anything to improve the infrastructure? Because most of the places, wherever, uh, you know, whatever I'm seeing, every pitch is getting converted into an astroturf which gives you equal, you know, the bounce or extra bounce. Is it comparable to the regular wicket? Because when you go out of US, I'm sure, you know, the teams are, you know, going to be playing in the regular uh, turf wicket. So how do you see this change? And, and I know the next topic is about, you know, the stadiums. Uh, there are, uh, you know, very uh, minimum number of stadiums. I think one is in Texas and the other one is in uh, uh, Florida. Uh, I've seen some turf wickets in California. So are you planning anything in the future to overcome this obstacle so that people will get real-time experience playing in the turf wicket? 
So it's a it's a good question, um, and um, I know um, at the moment I don't know I don't have an exact number, but if I were to if we were to count the number of uh, turf wickets in the country right now, you're mm -hmm. probably going to end up at um, at a number of about fifteen plus. So you oh. have fifteen plus actual turf wickets in the country right now. Oh wow! So I mean, I, I, thought, I thought, thought there would be fifteen. I thought maybe like four or five. When you say turf wicket, you're talking about something that they won't even put a mat or anything. Yeah, uh, actual turf wickets. So oh. I am. I'm. I live in Houston, and we have a facility very close to us called the Prairie View Cricket Fields. So there are six cricket fields, and uh, each field has turf wickets, uh, and probably four or five strips. Um, you know, oh, wow. on, on each ground. So that's just one example. I know the Woodley Park in uh, California has uh, turf wickets, uh, mm -hmm. three or four. And I know Ace uh, uh, slash Major League Cricket has just developed uh, maybe two or three uh, turf wickets in the Bay Area. Um, uh, so we all we know Florida has turf wickets. So. Um, there are, uh, you know, um, um, and we have Musa Stadium here in uh, Houston as well. So there are already, um, you know, uh, there is a lot of work going on from what I'm aware mm -hmm. uh, to develop turf wickets. Um, as part of the minor league slash major league um, uh, initiative, there are several... Uh, initiatives in play to develop stadiums uh, to support those tournaments in the future. So, so hopefully we'll see more stadiums coming up from that, that side of things. Uh, and I completely agree with you, AstroTurf versus Turf, uh, no comparison at all. So right. anytime I hear big performances being thrown out, I, uh, you know, coming through either senior levels or youth levels, some, Sometimes I have a sneaky question is like, hey, what surface was it played on? <laughs> because in my mind, it's a night and day difference, unfortunately. Right, right. So one of the participants, I mean, there is a question from the you know, participants. What are the opportunities for uh, umpires? I mean, let's say that I'm interested in umpiring and I want to you know, get an opportunity to represent USA. Similarly, if I'm a scorer, what are the opportunities for, uh, you know, those people who are interested in umpiring. Yeah. Um, I'm glad uh, this question was asked because uh, uh, I just would request uh, them to stay a little more patient because there's uh, some some uh, some good work happening right now. Um, just from a board perspective, uh, I'm aware that uh, there are committees being formed right now. One of the committees would be the development committee, uh, cricket development committee, and that has the charter for, uh, for advancing umpires and uh, coaches. And, uh, and that, uh, I'm also aware that there is already behind the scenes work being done to uh, formulate a plan around, uh, you know, umpiring and coaching. Uh, and especially from an umpiring perspective, I'm, um, once these committees uh, are formed and that uh, they are able to work on their plans, that they will be able to advance um, whatever plan is put in place pretty quickly to, you know, offer. I, I hope that we are able to come up with uh, training opportunities. We are training uh, opportunities for certifications and, uh, and uh, you know, inviting people to uh, uh, register for, to become an umpire. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, we do have some very senior umpires uh, in the country already that are, uh, you know, elite level or international level uh, ICC umpires right now and uh, hope uh, they will be taking the initiative to uh, teach others on how to do that, uh, get better at umpiring. Mm -hmm. So I would just request uh, whoever asked the question to just stand by uh, because there should be more news coming uh, on that front. Oh, excellent. Um, see, can you also, you know, talk to us a um, little bit more about uh, women's cricket? What are the opportunities exactly is going on with respect to women's cricket? 
Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so um, I consider women's cricket to be a very, very uh, important aspect of the overall uh, uh, cricket makeup of our country. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Miss Nadia Gruni is uh, is our uh, uh, champion at the board level um, to lead lead uh, this particular part of uh, the cricket. And uh, basically, what I what I do know is uh, the 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 pathway structure that we are going to uh, be formulating right now that will have uh, women's cricket as well. Um, you know, um, in 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 the plans, and the on the development side, uh, also there will be um, more plans that are put into place uh, that do, do does include like boys and girls. So, uh, so from a U.S. Uh, women's perspective, uh, we already have a um, a national team which is pretty competitive. Uh, we have a national coach uh, that has uh, been appointed and, uh, and they're working with the women's team as we speak. And, uh, you know, um, uh, we have, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, there was initiative started recently uh, to have combines um, at, at a few locations to identify, uh, uh, you know, women's talent. So, I think there is, uh, uh, we have the teams uh, in place, uh, the structures and the pathways uh, still need to be worked on. And, uh, you know, um, so there will be more news coming out again on this front. Oh, okay. Uh, that's, that's really good. So we're looking forward to it. There is another interesting question from uh, Chintan Patel. I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm not sure if you remember him, a good friend of mine. Um, I think looks like you know you and Chintan played uh, back in 2006 uh, in Canada. Okay, so, okay. so he has a long question. Uh, hi, Chintan. So the question is, uh, after 2000s, right? I mean, around after 2006 or seven, he is saying that there has not been uh, the regional tournament at all. So um, his question is, how would uh, people get exposure, or how would you, how would they, you know, get a chance to participate in the US? team or be available for the selection if there is no, uh, you know, interstate uh, tournament? Yeah, it's a great question. And uh, one that is uh, very high on the list of things that uh, we want to do very soon moving forward. And that comes back to the institution of uh, national tournaments. I think uh, he's definitely referring to the same tournament that I was talking about where I had an opportunity to play, uh, um, you know, and, and experience the pathway towards the U.S. team uh, back in 2005, 2006. Um, so we are, we are working on that. Uh, the plan actually was to get all that uh, instituted this year, but due to COVID, you know, we've had to um, kind of scale back the plans a little bit. Uh, but all these things, uh, the national tournaments are still still on the radar. We are we are working on these things. Uh, like I said, we are at the moment, uh, uh, you know, we are trying our best to see if something could be done towards the end of the year uh, to facilitate these tournaments um, and uh, hoping all goes well and we are able to provide a national tournament setup. Um, for the men's, women's, and uh, and the youth as well. Okay, okay. So there is one more question. I'm just you know reading the questions from the audience. We we have like you know five more minutes to complete our uh, one hour. So there is a question. Um, one second. So what if we are qualified uh, level one? I mean level one umpires from ECB or CA, etc. So, mm -hmm. so what is the question? Okay, one second, let me... Um... Okay, 
So with regards to umpiring, I think this question is from Shravan. What if we are qualified, um, qualified umpires like someone who is at least level one qualified from ECB or CA? Is that's the question? Well, like uh, if I have to guess, they are saying how can they get involved and uh, and become a part of uh, the system moving forward. So what I would say is, uh, uh, you know, if you are in that, um, uh, you are qualified and uh, you are uh, uh, somebody who would like to get involved, um, just send an email to uh, US Cricket. Um, I think on the website, you should be able to find an email or, uh, or feel free to get in touch with me as well. And I'll be happy to uh, uh, get you connected to the right individuals uh, who will be uh, overseeing the umpiring, uh, umpiring committees and things like that. So happy to have all of you that, uh, you know, have good qualifications and, uh, and it's, it's also umpiring, you know, is a passion for a lot of people. Right. Um, yeah, I always wanted to become a player, didn't think too much about umpiring, but along the way I've met so many people that, uh, you know, worship that art uh, or that skill and uh, are very, very passionate umpires. So I respect that a lot. And, um, and it, in the US, if we have some really good talent uh, and, uh, you know, passion around this, then then we should not uh, just uh, not acknowledge it or or use it uh, in the in the domestic or international scene. So, uh, just uh, try to get in touch. Uh, let us know about your qualifications. Uh, like I said, uh, you can uh, send me uh, an email, or you can go on the U.S. Cricket website and. Just send an email to uh, the U.S. Cricket Association. Sure. So there are few more questions coming up, but you know, considering the time, we have two more minutes. I want to take up you know two more questions, and then the rest of the questions I we will get it answered through email. One is from uh, uh, um, Arun Pal from Nashville, and he wanted to know how U.S. Cricket is planning to planning development for centers like Nashville, which are not uh, you know the major centers. Are there any plans in place to develop centers that are not major at with respect to cricket in the US? So I think uh, uh, Arun is a good friend. Um, um, I think there are two ways to look at that question. One is um, from a minor league perspective, for the moment at least, uh, the zones have been formed, like uh, the conferences have been formed. So uh, just have a look at which conference you're in and uh, what is the closest team that is associated with, uh, with this area for now and uh, try to get connected or try to get the best players uh, in, in front of, uh, you know, whoever uh, is the owner or whoever is running the minor league teams in that area. That is one, one way to think about things uh, in the future, if if there is, um, you know, um, a justification or or if there is a uh, need uh, or there is enough cricket to make sure that you can produce a team, then get get in touch with Major League Cricket for for future expansion plans. Um, that is the other thing. Um, and then thirdly, uh, you know, from uh, an overall. Uh, uh, cricket development, absolutely U.S. cricket wants, uh, you know, cricket to thrive in all the areas, not only the major major centers, but in all the areas. So, so as we produce youth tournaments or, uh, or uh, you know, as we produce more development opportunities, so cricket development is another aspect of what uh, U.S. cricket will be focusing on. And uh, basically try to get involved on those fronts to, to bring those projects and initiatives into the local area. Um, and uh, US Cricket has also announced, uh, uh, you know, youth uh, volunteer coordinators. And so keep in touch with the, those individuals because they will directly be connected with all of these initiatives. And they will be near driving these initiatives into their areas slash regions. 
so uh, so they will play a, an important role in uh, you know getting these uh, either on the development side or the comp- competition side so keep in touch with them work with them and uh, bring bring the best uh, into your local areas okay so so the other you know the two more questions i just want to take it up quickly um, and then the rest of the questions will address it uh, you know in uh, in email the one other question is do we have an do we have any online class or certification for umpiring a lot of uh, umpiring uh, related questions um, at the moment i'm i don't have an answer for that question i don't know the specifics because i'm not directly associated uh, but like i said if if there are these kind of questions i'll be happy to uh, forward it uh, to the right individual um either at the board level or uh, the committees that are going to be formed now uh, that would be directly associated with the umpiring and coaching um, uh, initiatives and then we can get that answered okay and um, okay so this is the last question um, i swear so how will t- teams qualify for youth national tournaments yeah so it's a it's it's a good question um there will be a national uh, tournament manual uh, that is being uh, prepared right now and what this is is uh, you know this this will lay out the entire uh, rules and uh, and the framework for how these tournaments will be conducted so uh, at the national uh, that the national level uh, we will have uh, zonal teams will be co- competing right and uh, there will be a structure put in place to um, go from where you are uh, on on your city level to actually making it into the zonal team right so um, so that is the way to do it uh, again all of this will come through uh, the the national youth coordinators uh, and i believe we have almost 25 plus coordinators that have been selected uh, by and and officially announced by us cricket all across the country so they will they will be instrumental in coordinating efforts that uh, at the uh, regional levels so so we will have have a process that is actually uh, well defined uh, as to the criteria and the selections and the selectors etc on on what that process looks like to make it into the zonal teams um you know if if um, if i had it my way i would uh, love to see kids playing a lot of intra zonal games to provide enough data points and enough uh, data out there for selectors to do a good job of uh, selecting the teams um in lieu of that we we may have to go to other means of uh, selections uh which are yet to be defined properly but uh but there will be a some sort of a process laid out on how to make the, your zonal teams and the zonal teams will then compete in the national tournament okay so now i think we have well passed 5 uh, minutes you know after the um, allotted 1 hour and uh, uh it was really you know very interesting to learn a lot of new initiatives and uh, i'm i'm personally very excited to see cricket moving uh, you know Uh, in a new direction uh, we're all waiting to see how this major and minor leagues are going to come up um, and uh, sushil before we wrap this session is there anything else that you want to um, say as a final uh, you know um well uh, i think uh, you, look uh, we we are we are in pretty exciting times um, you know i uh, i personally view this uh, like i said it's a tipping point for us cricket um we have a lot of exciting ventures ahead of us and uh, you know the opportunities uh, um, to be honest with you like sky is the limit here uh, so one one uh, guidance i was giving the minor league uh, uh, players that were trying out for the houston team is that look at look at a potential future where each each game in the minor league is being broadcast worldwide and if you are a serious talent you know you might be uh, noticed by someone in cpl tomorrow or right. uh, someone sitting back in india in uh, say a rajasthan royals team 
scout. You know, so if you produce a bowler bowling 140 plus and uh, suddenly, you know, it's being uh, broadcast worldwide, uh, people are always looking out for good talent. And, uh, and you might get a call uh, out of the blue, you know, to come and uh, try out. So anything can happen from here on. And uh, the uh, our under 19s, our under 19s, if, if they're able to do well, they might be playing in the World Cup. I mean, what, 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 how, how cool is that for our, our youth in the country to play in an official World Cup and compete against India and Australia and others? So anything can happen, you know, uh, the sky is the limit. Uh, just keep focused, uh, even for our uh, national men's and women's, you know, uh, uh, we have a bright future ahead of us. Uh, just need to keep the focus and... Uh, and never, never stop working hard, basically. Great, great. Um, yeah, on behalf of Cricket Social and, uh, you know, the entire cricket community in US, uh, Sushil, we would like to thank you for your time, insights and inspiration. We also thank all the participants for your interest in attending the webinar. Um, we sincerely hope that, you know, this chat session has provided a lot of valuable information to you all. Uh, and uh, I know that would improve uh, your cricket uh, career. Um, have a great day and we look forward to seeing you all in the next uh, episode. Thanks, Ashil, and everyone. Thank have you. Cheers.